weeks ago. Good evening again. We talked a number of weeks ago about crafting your first CV and professional branding, figuring yourself out, how to communicate that in writing and your CV. Tonight, what I wanna share with you is how to continue your message of professional branding in a face-to-face -face meeting and actually conducting a job interview, which is again, something you'll probably have to do a lot of times in your life. Um, it, and, and it's not actually only a job interview, it's almost any interview for anything you're gonna do. There's certain skills and tactics and you know strategic thinking about it. So we're gonna talk about that. So let me put up my presentation, which I've called a senior job interview. And if you have questions or whatever, feel free to shout out. Um, it's, so just let me know. Here we go. So the overview of my presentation, I am gonna give a brief introduction to corporate culture. We talked about a little bit last time, I'll say a little bit more. And then we're gonna talk about job interview skills. And then at the end, sample cyber, cyber job interview questions. And that's something which I'll sort of give you for homework to do more research on uh, what kind of questions they're gonna ask you. So let's talk about it. So again, we talked a little bit about the world as being a cruel place, uh, the world's a jungle. And um, you have to see yourself as a company called Me Incorporated, where you're responsible for your financial future. Bezrat Hashem, Akobide Shemayim, but you got to make good Ishtadlus. And so you're in this world, and you may be young and inexperienced, or maybe have some experience, but it's really important to learn how to walk the walk and talk the talk and sort of play the game and come to the table with self confidence and be able to communicate your professionalism. That the key word in all this stuff is professional, okay? To be an outstanding professional and not just to say it, but to really do it and be it and live it, okay? So particularly though, we're talking about getting a job in cybersecurity, that is this course, and this is your future. So you have to realize like, you know, some people maybe didn't realize when they came in, but this is like a paramilitary culture. A lot of people in the field here are coming from the army or from the intelligence agencies or from the police or whatever. So they're sort of tough people. It's a tough crowd. Um, they're very, they're tough, okay? They're not warm and fuzzy people. They're computer people and they're crime fighters, right? So you're, part, you're fighting crime. You're fighting the hackers, which is, you know, we have good, good versus evil here, cops and robbers. So it's very intense and it can be a little bit tough and gruff. So, you know, we have base Yaakov women and everything who are coming from a very different environment. Uh, you have to realize you're now part of Homeland Security, which is paramilitary. Um, you want to get a job like in a bank or a hospital or something, they're under attack, okay? So, you know, your first day on the job, you're under attack. It's not, it's not a picnic. It's not Candyland. Cybersecurity companies, the companies are hired guns. Are you working there? You're a hired gun. Your, inter your interview is to become a soldier. So you have to think about that. You have to sort of, you know, put on your helmet and get ready to fight. And I actually, I have words later in the presentation, but I'm gonna tell, share them with you right now. Because I just mentioned Beis Yaakov women. We had a woman uh, who did our course last year, and she's a real Hasidisha lady who she's married to Mamisha Dayan, okay? Her husband is an experienced Dayan who's made like 600 Gerushins and a couple of Chalitzas. Very, very from people. He has pay us down to his you know, whatever. Um, and she has, you know, two coverings on her head, a shaitel and then another covering. So very, very from woman. But they they suffered a financial reversal. They basically lost all their money, whatever. They lost their home. And so now she's working really hard to support them. And he's doing he, what he can. But she is tough, okay? She understands that she's playing for real. And so there's a Hebrew word. Uh, you Americans, you maybe never heard this Hebrew word, but I want to teach it to you. And the word is fighter. And the feminine form is fighterit, okay? So this woman who's a chesidish woman and she's lovely and she's artistic and great, she is a fighterit. And we've had a lot of that. Beisiaka women who are a mother of, you know, five, 10 kids, whatever, and they are fighteriot. That means they're, they're here, to, they're playing to win. They're playing to support their family and their husband learning, whatever. And they're tough, okay? So that toughness is a really good thing. And when the CEOs meet these women, they see, hey, these women are real, they're serious. And so even though they come from a completely different culture, but they see these are serious business people who are ready to fight the fight. 
and to do what it takes to win. And that's a really wonderful message to bring to the table in a job interview that I'm a fighter and I'm going to help your company win. And I am a, a soldier and I'm a gun that you can count on in times of war and distress. I'm going to be there. So the fact that, you know, we're coming from a particular culture and everything, that doesn't mean that you can't be a fighter. And even if you've never, you know, you never seen blood or fired a gun, it's not about that. It's about toughness, mental toughness. So again, I, I've told you before, work is not about your family or Shabbos or Yantiv or marrying off your kids. It's helping companies make money. Okay, business is business. And it's really serious. And again, maybe you don't love money, but money's really important. And to companies, it's their raison d'etre, right? It's why they exist. So if you're coming to get a job, you're telling them, I'm going to help you make money. And I'm going to fight hard to help you do that. So that, that has to be part of, you know, your message. So this is about corporate culture. And again, when somebody says it's not about the money, guess what? It's about the money. Um, I had some stuff here about different kinds of people you're going to meet along the way. Um, some people have a high IQ, they're very intelligent, but they have a low emotional intelligence. And some people are just jerks, right? <laughs> You're going to meet some jerks. So you have to also have a little bit of a thick skin and let it let it roll right off you and don't don't get upset. We had, you know, young women who cried after their first job interview because the guy interviewing them was, you know, he's from the San Khanim, from the paratroopers, and he was tough and he sort of sort of scared them. And, and he, you know, he, I don't know if he abused them, but he made them cry. And so you have to be ready to be, to be tough. Come in here to fight. Um, I have a helpful tip. Bosses and nephews care about money. Um, I, I'll Just really quickly, I'll tell you a story about my, my brother-in-law is a Harvard MBA. He's a really smart guy. He's done really well. And he had a nephew. Um, I guess it was maybe in Europe. They were visiting. And nephews don't really care about, you know, getting together with aunts and uncles. It's just not that interesting for, you know, a 20-year-old nephew to see his aunt and uncle. But the uncle said, Brett, we want to see you. And he put dollar signs in the WhatsApp or the SMS. So when Brett knew that there was money coming, he, he found time to have dinner with them. So, you know, it's a little bit crass. But, you know, when you realize this is about the money, that helps you to focus. And so realizing work is about the money. Okay, there are, there are other factors and there are other reasons people go to work and this and that. But it's the money is really important. Okay, I've now turning the corner and we're going to talk about the job interview itself. I have something in the chat. Let's see if I can get to that. Yes. I thought interviews like hearing that you also care about the safety of the world. Okay, Yeshaya, um, I like your question. Um, I, I once was at a meetup in Citibank. I was in Citibank for a period and, and, and a bunch of people said how they're going to save the world, you know, with their startup. And one guy says, I really don't care about saving the world. I want to make a lot of money. And, and so there's both kinds. You, you, you understand yourself. There's all kinds of people. And I'm actually going to talk about, right, uh, coming up in the slides, sort of understanding who you're talking to and what do they care about. And, I'm, and you know, we're going to talk about three different people who might be interviewing you. And one might be a human resources person, which I, I stereotype as a woman in her 30s, you know, who's sort of soft and nice and cares about people. But your interview might be with the CTO, and that's like, you know, a technical person. That's a man in his 30s or 40s. And you might be with the CEO, and that's a man in his 50s or 60s, okay? And so each one of these people is coming with a different angle on it. And you, as the interviewee, you need to tailor your message based on who you're talking to. And so that's something to take into account. So, of course, there are people that care about saving the world. I'm not saying not, but I'm trying to give you um, background and prepare you. Um, because a lot of young people tend to be idealistic, and I want you to be pragmatic more than idealistic. And Joseph Alberti says it's common sense. You know that common sense is not nearly so common as it's made out to be. And it's important, as I'm a teacher, right? I'm trying to teach to get people to think about these things. So I'm not telling you it's like this or it's like that, but I am trying to expose you to the real world. Um, yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, when um, Benji G asks about being obsessed with money, I mean, we're not going to talk about money in our job interview, so that's not part of the topic. Um, I, I just wanted you to understand that the business world is about business. Let's call it business and not money, okay? But let's get to the interview now. Your CV has been successful, and you now have a job interview. 
and maybe we help, help get you a job interview. But now you got to deliver the goods. You got to go meet somebody and sit across the table from them and answer questions and tell about yourself. And that's sort of scary and intimidating. And maybe you've never done it, or maybe you have. You're going to sweat, okay? That is like, so, it's a nerve wracking situation. So you have to have intestinal fortitude, okay? You're going to have to run to the bathroom, you know, if you're not if you're not ready for it. So again, this is your game. You got to be up for the game. And so we're talking about how to prepare for the game because if you, preparation is the first key to success, you want to be really well prepared. If you're really well prepared, then that will help you succeed. And I'll tell you, whenever you have the opportunity for a job interview, you should always take it. Even if you don't think you're going to get the job or if you're not going to accept the job, you should still go because practice makes perfect. And the more job interviews that you go through, the better you'll be at conducting them. The more self-confidence, the more natural, the more comfortable you'll be. And so that's good. So job interviews are challenging and they, they are a test, right? And it's, it's harder than a test where it's multiple choice or even long answer. This is face to face and someone's testing you and you may not know all the answers. So you're gonna think on your feet. So it's a very nerve wracking situation. So you wanna try and be cool and so forth, but it is a challenging thing. So whenever you have the opportunity to practice, and one of the things I'll say also is practice at home, you know, have a fake uh, job interview with your spouse or your parent or your sibling or your roommate, whoever, because this is a tricky thing. Okay, so uh, these, this is the outline of stuff you wanna think about. Preparation, transportation, listening skills, communicating your message, understanding your interviewer, the body language that you're going to be communicating, what you're going to wear, which jewelry and, and makeup, etc. Things not to say, follow up after the interview, and then some specifics about cyber. And I hope to let you go in 15 minutes. So here we go. So preparation, as in most things in life, how you prepare is the best indicator of your success in the job interview. Pre preparation is really important. And if you don't do it, I can almost guarantee you'll fail. Okay, you really have to prepare for a job interview, each specific one, like. You can't get there and not know what the company does because one of the things in cyber, you're supposed to be a researcher, okay? Well, you know, whether it's going to be SOC or PT or GRC, whatever you do, you have to, as a cybersecurity professional, one of the things you know how to do is online research. So if you couldn't research this company and know what they do, then you are totally, you know, ineligible and incompetent and just not right for this job. So you got to do research before. So learn about the employer. You may not know who's going to interview you, but you should be prepared for all three scenarios. Like I said, the HR quote unquote woman, the CTO geek or the CEO man on top. Okay. Those are going to be different character of the interview. A lot of times you'll have first, second and third interview. You may have all three of them, the first, the HR, then the CTO, and then the CEO, if you qualify. So, you know, each one is gonna take different preparation. What questions do I want to ask them? Make a list of those. What questions are they gonna ask me? Make a list of those. And we're gonna talk about it. You can Google that. And I even have a, a link here. We won't get to watch it, but you'll get the concept that there are people out there that are gonna teach you the exact questions that they may well ask you in a job interview as a, as a entry level cybersecurity person. Like they may ask you about the OSI, you know, model. Can you name the layers? And you know, if I say uh, the packets, the data packets, you know, which layer does that go to? Stuff like that, that's really on the test. They may ask you that. So you have to know. What are you gonna answer? write out your answers, hone, polish, carve your answers, record yourself, right? Recording yourself is for free. And you can see how you look when you give your answers. Um, they're gonna ask you your strengths and your weaknesses. That's a very common question. What are you gonna say? You should not be thinking about it, you know, at the interview, you should be prepared for that question well in advance. Okay, this is sort of obvious, this is common sense, but still you gotta mention it, transportation. You know, once you're nervous, then it, you, you may not navigate well, you can't find the building or uh, it's going to make you crazy until you're running and sweaty and that's no good. So plan a low stress way to get to the interview 15 minutes ahead of time. If you need to go there the day before to make sure you can find it. So do that. You're nervous and you need, you need to be at your best. Keep yourself calm and focused on the game. The pregame should not drain your energy and nerves. Okay. Listening skills. Some people are really good listeners, some people are not, but everybody can improve on their active listening skills, okay? 
I wrote here, better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Oh, it's sometimes it's good to be quiet. Um, of course, you're going to have to say a lot of things in an interview, but that doesn't mean you have to do all the talking. It's it's perfectly legitimate to ask questions and then listen carefully to the answers and show your interest. Ask a, ask a, sec, a follow up question based on the answer they gave you. So listening is really important, not only in the exchange of information, but by listening, you can understand more about the person interviewing you more about the company and its culture, the expectations, how it is to work there and so forth. So listening is, of course, really important. You can't just be thinking, you know, while while he's talking, you're thinking about what, what you're going to say next. <laughs> That's not where you want to be. You want to really listen. OK, learn about the job and employer by attentive listening. Find out what qualities they're looking for. Allow the interviewer to guide the conversation and their desired direction and pace. Show that you're a good team player. You can listen and interact effectively with others. That's one of the things they're testing you on. How will you be as a team player? Are you the kind of person, maybe you're a superstar, but you can't work with other people because you're totally focused on yourself. So that's that's a chisaro and that's a lack in you. So your ability to communicate effectively and to interact nicely with other people is part of your value to the company. Understand the role, the personality, the interviewer to tailor your message to that person. And we talked a little bit about that. We'll see it again. Okay, so we've listened and we're there. Now we need to communicate our message, okay? And we talked about the CV and it being an expression of your brand. Are you, there we had a guy in the last class, uh, he, I really loved him. And he was a really funny guy, a warm person. And he had some experience in IT. And so I helped him like brand himself as the funny um, IT expert or something like that. But that was gonna be his brand, okay? Because you could be really serious, you could be the huge expert, you could be the life of the party, but you should have a brand uh, that, you know, this characterizes you and this is, if they're looking for this, that's, that's who should hire you. So your CV is the beginning of the, that expression, but your interview should continue to express that message and your branding. It's what you say, it's how you say it, okay? Um, we're gonna talk now, I have two slides on transferable skills and professional values, and I'll explain those in, in, at length. But the basic, basic message of the job interview is the following. I can do this job, I want to do this job, and I can get along with others and contribute to the team. Me, so it really starts with, I understand the job, I know what you're looking for, I have it, I can do it, I want to do it, and I can get along with others and, and make this company better than it is, okay? That's the basic message. I wrote, you know, this is a uh, job interview is not therapy. You'd be surprised. Some people come, you know, with an attitude or they need help or they're begging for mercy or whatever. That's not the way. You're coming as a professional. You have what to sell. You are there to sell. You're making a sale that they should want to hire your professional services. It's acting the part of the effective hire. Who do they want to hire? Be that person. Communicate, you understand what they're looking for, and you can be, will be, and are that person. Okay, that is the game. That is the message. Okay, we're talking now about transferable skills, and that means, you know, this might be your first job in cyber, but you've done other things in your life. You weren't just born yesterday, okay? Uh, we have someone who has, has worked some time in architecture. That's relevant because you've built up skills, whether they're technical skills, their communication skills, you know how to write reports or you know how to create Google Forms or whatever, critical thinking, multitasking, teamwork skills, creativity. I'm super creative. I can always come up with a cute way to say things or to, to decorate the halls or make an invitation to a party, whatever. Leadership, I'm the kind of person who takes charge and guides others. These are not relevant to a particular job. They are whatever position you're in, they're always relevant. You can't just say these words, oh, I'm a multitasker. Oh, I have great critical thinking skills. That's idiotic, okay? That's like very much boilerplate and you sound stupid. So you have to get a little past there. You have to d explain, demonstrate, bring examples of how you have these skills and so forth, okay? But these are examples of transferable skills that are not about the particular job, but are part of your value um, offering as a professional. I want to mention something that happened to me on Sukkot. I was in, I had a guest in the Sukkah in New York, and he said that anybody in college should take one 
a computer science course and two, a statistics course. And what he was really, he said, whatever job you have in any industry, it will somehow relate to computer science and to statistics. And I thought that was really smart. And those are essentially transferable skills. If you understand statistics, you understand computers, whatever you do, you're probably gonna have some interaction with a computer. So those are examples of transferable skills. Professional values, we understand what values are, and these are your professional values. Like we have religious values, but you don't want to, you know, probably harp on those because sometimes those come into conflict with, with your job. Not necessarily and not always, and sometimes they could help, but a lot of times there's going to be a little bit of a culture gap. And so you don't want to talk a lot about your religious values. You want to talk about your professional values. So things like motivation, your high energy, your commitment, reliability, determination, pride, productivity, systems and procedures, whatever. These are professional values. And you may have some of them and not others. And you may have a story that demonstrates you know, how you have this and you, you do everything for the team and whatever, whatever. But these are things to think about and then to mention them in your job interview, again, with the story, with the sentence or two to back them up, not just to say, oh yeah, I take a lot of pride in my work. That's like meaningless, right? Anybody could say those words, but to explain how, you know, I, I stay late in order to really work and that once that happened to me and I had to meet a deadline and so I, you know, I stayed at work all night, whatever. You have to tell a convincing story. Um, okay, I wrote here, my title is Understanding the Person Across the Table. So if you have good, you know, emotional intelligence, you understand people. So use your interpersonal skills to gauge what interests the other party in a conversation. Right, because it is different what you're going to talk about, depending on who you're talking to. So you want to tailor your message and your communications to the type of person you're speaking to. Is it an HR person, a technical person, a management person? Okay, if it's the CTO, very technical person, you need to talk technical. Don't talk about your ability to impact team spirit. Talk about your project. Okay. Talk about your certifications. Talk about technical stuff with technical people. Something you need to take into account is body language. Our body tells a story, okay? Nonverbal communications are the majority of our interaction, which is sort of surprising. But your body will be telling a story, so you need to make sure your body's telling the story that you want to tell. And the way is look in the mirror, practice, okay? Again, record yourself, you know, open up Zoom, and um, record yourself giving a job interview and see what is your body doing are you moving around too much do you look like timid and shy or are you projecting what what is the message that your body language is giving how are you sitting uh I'll just, i don't have much time but there was a guy who was sitting on his leg and he didn't want to you know get up he felt it would make him look too jumpy so he continued sitting on his leg until it fell asleep and when the interview was over he got up and he fell over because he couldn't stand up because his leg had fell asleep that's pretty stupid so you have to have balance uh, watch yourself and others act like the person you want to be yeah and here i noted Haredi women can be fighter out that um you know if you come in strong and you show you're strong so that'll be a, a, a winning message Okay, related to that, and I, I'm gonna talk about it, attire, makeup, and whatever else it says here, I can't see my own screen. Professionalism is the name of the game. Look like the employee that you think they want to hire. Okay, again, be that person, dress like that person. Your clothes, your hair, your makeup, jewelry will be telling a story. Okay, I'll say your tattoos, you probably don't have tattoos, but all those things will be making a statement, your haircut, right, your piercings, right? So make sure those things are telling the story that you want to tell. So I have like a joke, bar mitzvah boys, you know, a Haredi bar mitzvah boy puts on a hat and he's like 90% hat, right? He has this giant hat and he's a little kid. Um, and the same thing with the new Kala, a new bride. She's like, she's had a wedding and you see her during Sheva Brachas or something. She's mostly shaitel. She's like 90% shaitel and the, a little bit of a woman under, underneath it. So sometimes, you know, we have young women here who are going to a job interview, you don't wanna be that. You wanna be simple, straightforward, professional. You don't wanna catch people's interests with your makeup, you know, your, your eyelashes and your lips are, are not the topic. So you don't wanna to draw too much attention to your physical appearance. You want to 
uh, you know, look professionally dressed and ready. I, I do like to tell the story. We had a Chesidish girl who was really sharp, a real go-getter, and she kept, you know, losing. She was not getting her jo the job offers. And so she came into the office and my wife said to her, you look like a tchotchka. She was putting on too much makeup and too much jewelry. And so she looked like something that she wasn't. And she's a very firm girl, et cetera. She put on less makeup and less jewelry for the next interview. And sure enough, she got hired. So again, you want to make a professional impression. You want to look like you work for the company. In Israel, a lot, and in the in the cyber industry, it's very informal. So like, it's not like you're going to wear a tie and something fancy. Probably not. You want to look again, clean, put together, um, professional, but not overdressed or underdressed. Okay. So again, you have to think about it in advance. See if you can see pictures of how the people in that company dress in order to gauge what you should wear for the interview, because it is important not to come as a creature from outer space. And again, if we're coming as Haredim, there's anyway a culture gap. So we got to try to, you know, decrease the culture gap and try and I'm not saying if you only wear white shirts, you have to wear a blue shirt. I don't think that. Okay, I, I'm a white shirt person. I only wear white shirts. And you know, you get hired if, if you deliver the goods, but you don't want to, you know, exaggerate or exacerbate uh, the issues of culture gap. Okay, there are things you should not say. Okay. Um, there's a time to discuss vacations, perks, salary. It is not at the job interview. Um, probably not till they've offered you a job. Stay focused on relevant topics. Other topics, I like to fish or I like to, you know, boat or whatever. They um, they shouldn't be used unless it's to strengthen the case you're making or a particular connection with the person. But keep focused. Okay. I have a link here about um, you know dummies.com. Find a job interview. Job interviews for dummies. Fine. Um, there are good questions and good and bad answers. Somebody had the first question of his test. Tell me about yourself, but nothing that's written on your resume. Okay, so that's like a challenging question. So you want to think in advance what you would answer to that. Here's 10 things. I'm going to read them quickly. What you should never say in a job interview. I'll do whatever. That shows you're desperate. And that's not a professional thing to be. So even though you might be desperate, don't ever say, I'll do anything, okay? That's not a professional thing to say. To ask them, what do you do? Again, failure in research, you need to know that. To complain about your last company or say you didn't get along with your boss or to answer a question, oh, it's on my resume. Yeah, but I'm asking you. Perfectionist is my biggest weakness. Okay, that's idiotic and you know anybody could say that. <clears throat> I think outside the box, how much vacation time do I get? No, I have no questions. Okay, you, then you're you're not a curious person. That, that's also a problem. How soon do you promote employees? That's not a good question. Um, I have a chat. In the US, when should Shabbos come up? Okay, Yeshaya, that's a great question. When should Shabbos come up? I, I still think only after they offer you a job because you're there, the first thing you gotta do is make the sale. Once, if they're not going to hire you, okay, then there's not, then you have all the Shabbos and Yont if you want. So you want them to want to hire you. So first make that sale, and then if they've decided they've they, they've gone right, they've they've eaten the bait, they've taken it, they've gone for it. So now they're making you an offer. So now you need to talk about and say, okay, you know, I have an issue on Fridays, I have to leave early or whatever it is. So if they ask you about it, I understand you're religious, is that going to be an issue? So then I'm not saying to avoid it, but I'm just saying that you don't need to initiate that until you're sort of in a position, in a better position that they want to hire you. So I would, I would wait on that until you need to talk about it. That's my ad advice. And, and I'll just, uh, uh, usually they ask if there's an accommodation for et cetera. Fine, okay. I'll tell you a quick story, and I don't want to keep it late, but I do want to share something. A doctor was um, negotiating his contract for the Cleveland Clinic, and he, he said he needs eight days paid vacation for Hanukkah. Okay, this is in addition to, of course, Pesach and Sukkot. So the CEO consulted with the from guy and said, you know, what should I tell him? And he said, absolutely not. And another guy from another from guy said, you know, you should have told him don't hire that person because he's he's not honest. He was trying to manipulate and get eight days of paid vacation when you know you don't need them. Don't be a jerk. Okay, don't use the religion to be a jerk. Okay, let me uh, finish up. Follow up at, um, at the end of the job interview. It's perfectly legitimate and it shows that you're interested by saying, 
how can I follow up? You know, when can I get back to you? That just shows that you're interested in the job, okay? Okay, now uh, a minute of cyber specifics. So in cyber, skills are king. They, they care about almost nothing except what you can do on the keyboard, okay? That's really, really everything. So be prepared to talk about and demonstrate your skills. Getting certifications is key. So start getting certifications, everybody. Projects, your final project is going to be an asset. It's going to be part of your portfolio and what you're going to sell and what you're going to talk about in the meeting. So take that very seriously. I know Omer has begun to, to talk about it with you. Um, interest, past and future, anything you don't know, they might ask you technical questions. You won't know the answer. That's not the end of the world but show interest that you want, to, you want to know and then go home and learn about it. So if you do have a second opportunity, uh, you can come back and say, okay, I learned about it. And so I, I have a rhetorical question. Have you learned anything in this course? Because if you did, you should know that you need to Google anything and everything. So Google cybersecurity job interview questions, okay? And you'll find a bunch of you know, YouTube videos of people that are going to really show you the 10 most common, you know, cybersecurity entry level job interview questions. And that will be really helpful to look at that in advance. So um, I will put up my slides and I will share, you know, a few of those YouTube videos about um, cybersecurity interview questions. And I'm here for you always, as you know, if you if you somebody wanted to do a, a practice interview, we could do that. Um, so, you know, Get ready to make the sale. Um, getting a job is, is you got to make a sale. And so bring your best game, prepare in advance, learn, learn the sugya, learn about it, and then and then you can do it. It works, okay? We, we have people working and they, they've gotten through this. It's scary and intimidating at first, but you, you know, you put on your big boy <laughs> shoes or whatever, and you go and you do it. So you could do it. We have a lot of confidence in you. Um, Yashai asks, is there a risk of over-advertising oneself and ending up uh, over your head disappointing employer? You know there's something called imposter syndrome, that after people get a job, then they wake up in the middle of the night with all these nightmares that, oh, they hired me to be a cybersecurity analyst and I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so that happens in every field, not only in cyber. And so, of course, you know, you should get a job that you can do, but it's good to get a job a little over your head and, and your coworkers will help you and you'll learn on the job. You should expect to be learning on the job. So no, I don't think there's a risk like that. Of course, you're gonna be honest and you, you know, you're gonna tell them where you're coming from and what you know and so forth. And then you're ready to learn and grow. So sometimes we learn and grow fast and we have to overcome you know, a, a big gap in information fast and sometimes it, it's slower. So, if we, But if you come with a good attitude and you're hungry to grow and curious and so forth, so that's what Shem should work good. Thanks everybody for being here. Wishing everybody brach v'atzlacha. See you next week. Should you ever show up with a, at a computer? Mm, I don't think you need to. I think they have a computer. <laughs> okay. Good night, everybody. Take care.